Hey everybody, um, so I'm, uh, I'm working on some more uh, gaming hills. Um, I think I'm gonna do uh, just a playlist of um, like hills, <laughs> like my, my progress. Um, I wanted to talk about that though, so like I, uh, the, the first like gaming hills that I made were like really kind of realistic looking. And then um, I had, like, funny enough, like in a D&D &D campaign, I had some players and they were like trying to sort of like run up the hills and like use the hills to their advantage to like shove players off or like shove like enemies off like a cliff and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, you know, like I, I love that. Like I want to encourage my players to use the terrain to their advantage and like, you know, be creative and, and stuff like that. So I was like, I need to make stylized hills where um, they're more usable. Like you can pose stuff on top of them and use them more functionally, right? Like um, I, uh, I remember I watched a video a while ago by Mel, the terrain tutor. He's kind of like the godfather of like gaming terrain making. But he's talking about how like you have like a, a triangle where it's like you can have things be ultra realistic you can have them be really pretty or you can have them be um really functional so you kind of have to have some there has to be like some give and take like my my sister is a, uh uh she's an, an editor for a magazine and she talks about how with people with like writing or illustrators or whatever, you can have something fast and you can have it be good, but it's not going to be cheap. Or you can have it uh, be good and, you know, it could be cheap, but it could be take a, <coughs> it could take a really long time. Like it could be one of those things that somebody has on the back burner while they've got other work that they're, um, you know, is, is paying the bills and they're just kind of doing this thing for like a side thing, then they're not charging you as much. Um, but, uh, so about the, 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 the stylized thing, right? Like I made, um, I think this is the first, my first attempt is I made this a long time ago and then like, I'm just gonna, I think I'm gonna make like a playlist of hills and you can kind of see like some of the progress that I've made, like how I've like leveled up as a gaming hill maker. Um, but these like, they don't, they have the flat bits and it's made out of like cork and like rock molds, like woodland scenic rock molds and stuff like that. This is okay. Um, and then like, I think my, my second attempt was I tried to make some cork hills and like, you know, again, like if you want to see any of these, just I'll, I'll put a playlist somewhere or up here, I don't know, wherever. Um, and then uh, these, again, like these look better, more functional, but I really struggled with the process, like gluing the, um, the, the foam together and then using like the hot glue gun and trying to key the the like rock molds together with the cork to make it look like something kind of natural and then have the steps going up that look kind of natural so you know getting getting better and then like finally ended up doing these guys and the problem with these is like the technique hasn't really changed that much like i still like this uh this technique but the problem with these is that we don't use these terrain tiles. They're just too like unwieldy. They aren't functional enough. Like what I really want is just hills, like that are kind of flat on top and then have like areas that stuff can be moved around and posed on and just very like pretty but functional, like usable, right? So. This is like the kind of like the final form. Like this is this is what I, these are the ones that I, I think I'm gonna be making kind of going forward. And I'm still, I wanna have enough of this stuff to like fill a table, just make a, um, a big uh, 
kind of natural looking table full of pills and whatever, like mix and match like jungle stuff or um, make them into islands or use them on an alien planet is like, you know, just, just hills like rocks. And uh, so, so yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. And um, so, yeah, but this is, this is a, a much, much easier process because I'm not, I, I don't use the woodland sand rock molds as much to build up stuff. I just kind of use them as like little accents in places and then I kind of like carve away and use like other stuff to get sort of natural looking uh, hills that are still very functional, very, very poseable, right? So anyways, yeah, thanks for sticking through that. <laughs> um, I'm gonna make a hill playlist and then let's make some of these, these kind of hills. Hey everybody, so uh, I'm getting ready to make some hills. Um, I, uh, yeah, what do I have? Um, I, uh, I was looking at, at these guys and uh, I probably, I don't know, I'll, I'll, I probably talk about this in an intro or something, but basically I just want to make hills like this that, <laughs> or you know, like this without the, um, the tile part, like the terrain tile part to go with it that, um, that I can just plop down. Um, and I made these specifically uh, for like Frostgrave and because I was really into my Night Haunt army at the time and I wanted to play like Warcry on them and stuff like that. We don't use these. <laughs> these, these sit in a, in a box. So um, what I want is something where I can roll out like a battle mat and then plop down hills on top of it. But so I, you know, I made, I made these guys in, in a video. Um, I made this one in a video. Um, I think I'm going to go back and make a, um, like a hill playlist so that you can go back and you can, you, you can just press play and like go through the hill videos if you want to watch some of the, the previous ones about these. Um, but I have a technique down. Um, I think that I have like leveled up as a, uh, a hill maker since I made those and um, I just I have like a, a way that I like to do these now um, that is like I feel like it's really efficient. Um, so instead of going around and taking uh, like rock molds like I've got some woodland scenics rock molds and then um, instead of going around and like gluing these to the sides and stuff and then you know trying to like piece them together to make different shapes and stuff that's not really how I use them um, or it's not how I prefer to use them um, I prefer to use them to like sort of break up the tops of these things um, so, you know, like with our gaming hills, we want to have like functionality where things won't slide off of them and then you want to be able to like climb on top of them. So we make these flat stepped things, which are not realistic, right? But these kind of break that up and then making texture on the sides breaks it up too. So that, and it makes them prettier. Um, <laughs> so what I like to do is more of a subtractive process actually. So um, I will take like a, a utility knife like this and then um, but by subtractive what I mean is like this is additive where you're sticking things on top of the foam and then um, Subtractive is where you're taking something away and kind of sculpting at it. So, and I feel like the foam is really underrated as far as like pink stuff, you know, it's maybe it's not underrated, but it's like there's only 
a certain amount of people out there that are actually making stuff out of the foam, you know? A lot of people would rather like glue on the rock molds or they'd rather do, you know, just like sprinkle gravel on top of it or whatever, do something like that instead. Um, so anyways, what, yeah, what, I, what I'm gonna do is uh, I, I do wanna keep these like flat enough so that I can pose minis on them. Um, but I don't want to um, have like big sloping uh, flat parts. I wanna keep it like kind of interesting and rocky and have, um, you know, uh, just interesting looking like steps kind of going up in like different areas or like just create some some shapes and um, so this is this is pretty rough like the um, basically the main the main thing that I want to do here is I did I went around with with the hot wire right and I cut out I cut out some shapes and then I I went ahead and I um, glued them together and then um, I, when I, when I glue the, the foam together, I prefer to use, um, the, uh, Gorilla Glue. And then I will, uh, like, this stuff takes a long time to cure, and then it kind of expands. So I'll, I'll, like, put, uh, some little push pins in it, and then set a, a textbook on top of it to, um, to glue things up. And then these are just some... These are some, uh, this is MDF. This is an old still life that I never finished, wasn't really interested in anymore. So I'm gonna make some good out of it and then make uh, hills out of it. <laughs> so the, the purpose of the MDF is just to kind of have a really, really tough thing on the bottom that I can glue stuff to that will be, um, create that that lip, like that edge of the, kind of like the rocks and stuff going up. Um, so I'm gonna, you know, take it, carve away at this stuff um, and make some just rock faces. Uh, I might do, I don't know, I might do like a time lapse or something, we'll see. Uh, yeah. So, oh, and then this one, like, just wanted to show, like, this one, all I did was go around and, and pull on it with my finger uh, to create some, some texture on the sides. And you can see that that kind of gets some interesting little kind of landform shapes, um, just picking at it with my finger. Okay, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna get to work on this, and then, um, oh, the, the, the other thing is that uh, I want to kind of expose, I don't want these like clean edges. I want to, I want to like expose, like get some texture and stuff, and then like expose the, um, the porous, like create some surface area for um, plaster to stick to. But also this is just gonna, um, uh, like create some interesting looking shapes on its own. Just kind of chipping away at it. But be careful. One of my friends sliced his hand open the other day pretty good with one of these uh, working on some terrain stuff. <laughs> so, poor guy. So I just wanted to give you guys kind of a little close up of like how how I like to do this, this just to get some shapes. It's super easy. Um, so I just kind of cut across to like make some uh, kind of striations, and then I, you know, I want to have this kind of like fault line going this way. So I'm just going to kind of cut into it a little bit make this shape here and then just 
go in with my finger and just pull on it. And you get some really interesting looking texture. Super easy. And, but you know, this is not the, like the finished product either. This is just, this is gonna be that like skeleton. But you know, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. You can still see the, the piece like where these two pieces of foam are glued together, but that's, you know, that's all gonna be hidden. So, but yeah, it's super easy. All right, and uh, yeah, so I just, I much, much prefer this, the, the, this way of doing this instead of um, uh, gluing the rock molds on and then having to, like I would much rather just carve on a piece of foam to get to this, to this point and then um, add a few little rock molds here and there because the rock molds, you know, you have to mix up plaster, you have to pour them, you have to wait for that to dry, and then you have to piece them together, you have to glue them on, and then you still need to come back in with plaster at some point to kind of like cover up the, uh, the little join spots. So um, I am just gonna go ahead and glue these on with a uh, some PVA glue. I'm not going to use this stuff because this stuff is just, it's, it's, um, it's a little bit too much for just for this part. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go around the sides and, uh, you could just use like a nail file or something like that to just kind of knock down the edges, but I just want to get rid of the, um, you know, any, any edges, any like right angles, um, on the, uh, the MDF. So I'm just gonna use a, like a kind of aggressive little sanding bit. Um, okay, plug it in. Okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and go around the sides and then take some of those hard edges off on the MDF just so it kind of blends in a little bit with uh, when, it, when I set it down on the table I don't want any really hard edges that's but I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna make a really really thin little lift just kind of knock it down a little bit okay so I'm gonna temporarily well not temporarily but I'm gonna glue these guys down with PVA um, and if it, if it wasn't for the fact that the next step was going to be, um, putting plaster on top of this stuff, um, I wouldn't trust the PVA to be enough. Um, the, <clears throat> the, the foam is, it's, it's slightly porous, but it's not really poor enough, porous enough for PVA glue to do a good job. Um, it just doesn't like seep into, um, you know, plaster is like slightly porous, same thing. And then the, the foam is slightly porous, but it's just not, not porous enough for PVA glue to do a really good job. So, um, but yeah, I'm just going to kind of glue these guys down just, just to get them in place where I want them. And then next up, I'm going to go ahead and uh, mix up some plaster. Uh, so I'm going to be using this stuff. This is uh, Durham's Rock Hard Water Putty, and it's a it's a really really tough plaster. It's a gypsum based plaster, um, so it. It like just dries hard as stone. Um, so I'm gonna grab something from the recycling to mix this stuff up in because I'm gonna toss it when I'm done. Okay, so when I mix this stuff up, 
there's a certain kind of consistency that I'm looking for. Um, I'm not, <laughs> not really following the directions per se. Uh, it's basically, there's, it's, um, it's kind of like I know it when I see it. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to add some water, maybe about um, like half and half, you know, uh, plaster to water. And then um, I'm going to mix it up. And then I like to just use a, um, this is a palette knife. And uh, I like to use it to sculpt with too. So that's a little bit too runny. Add a little more plaster to that. I want it like kind of like sort of like melted milkshake uh, thickness and it will start to harden up very quickly um, but it has some some working time And I'm only going to mix it up in batches. Uh, not going to mix up a whole bunch of this stuff. I'm just going to go around and, you know, work with it, mix up some, put it on, kind of let it cure a little bit, and then uh, put some more on. Um, that's about, yeah, just about right like that. So maybe a little bit more than melted milkshake. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and slop it on. And that is going to kind of lock things in, in place. Um, that's the thing that I trust to really hold everything else down. Um, So as I'm putting this stuff down, I'm just kind of like plopping it on, not really being too careful or anything. And it starts to set up really quickly. So I'm just gonna kind of start pushing it around. And then when it starts to get a little bit harder, like this, in this area, then you can kind of like uh, pick at it and then you'll start to get some really interesting looking kind of rocky texture. This is still kind of in the thick goopy stage or the, the not dry, <laughs> not carvable stage. Okay, so this is starting to get more to like the harder kind of like sculptable phase or like some of it is. Um, so basically I'm just gonna kind of cut into it, you know, create some texture, kind of like push around the dry stuff so that uh, I wanna do like a little bit of gap filling and just kind of create some nice interesting little texture and some spots but like fill, fill with holes and stuff and, um, but I'm just going to kind of put in those um, like striations like you would see in natural rocks like fault lines and cleaves and fractures and um, up here.
but you can see how it's I'm gonna I'm gonna show you when it's when it's actually dry because this is kind of a process it needs to like dry and set up a little bit before you can actually carve on it right so you can like you can kind of see how the when it's like wet um, basically you just need to keep kind of shoving it around until it actually dries and then you get these kind of interesting looking textures but you know it's still um, just being like cos cognizant of how how I would use this to actually you know play games on you just kind of leave some leave spots where you can pose um, minis like leave it flat enough for stuff to rest on top of it you can get something that looks really interesting but it's actually very functional too uh, and very you know usable very utilitarian like you can use rocky hills in any kind of game that there is <laughs> so anyways um, I'm going to go ahead and spray paint these and you can see that there is some spots where there's exposed foam but as long as you hold the the spray can back like around like 10 inches you want to hold it back from whatever you're spraying around like uh six to ten inches kind of is a good rule of thumb and then it's not going to actually melt the foam if you're not that close to it um, and then mostly most of this stuff is covered in plaster so it should soak up paint really well but uh, yeah I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint this and then I will show you painting and flocking okay I forgot about one thing before spray paint um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around the sides and uh, I'm just gonna do some uh, Kind of like ooh, I don't rubble uh, tallest kind of stuff. I guess tallest would be if like they use that term in model railroad, where if you like carved out the side of a hill to make way for a railroad to come through, there would be like rubble uh, blown up bits of rock down at the, the base. So I think that's a railroad term, but like basically just gonna make some kind of rocks and stuff around these um, little you know, spots like this uh, to kind of fill that in. And um, I'm just going to use some PVA glue straight out of here. Um, let's see. I might use a brush just a little bit. Um, so, and I'm also, I'm just going to, I'm going to save, I have some of these, um, <laughs> Some of this this stuff that I carved away from that's like used up plaster. Um, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take advantage of that and then use that as rubble along this the sides of these things too because it looks really natural. Um, it looks like natural kinds of rocks and um, and it also likes to uh, soak up paint and uh, you know and glue and all that too. So, and then I have a mixture here of like really fine grit sand and kitty litter. Um, and use that too. And then um, once I have a good pile of it, kind of how I want it, um, then I can I can come in with some uh, scenery glue. And then this is IPA scenery glue. It just has a little bit of rubbing alcohol kind of mixed in with it. But it has no surface tension or it has a lot less surface tension than water does so it just kind of runs into everything like naturally and soaks into it and that's going to soak into the foam it's going to soak into the plaster it's going to soak into the mdf and just create a really strong uh, layer of glue Okay, so I uh, took this guy outside and spray painted it. Used like a um, you know a dark gray kind of slate colored uh, spray paint, and then now I want to do some different kinds of dry brushing. 
Um, so I've got uh, pigments. I've got these are pan pastels, but they're just uh, pigments, and then just some different kind of earth tones. Um, yeah, I've just got like uh, kind of a iron rich red, um, like a dark brown, and um, just all kinds of different um, earth earthy looking colors. So I'm just going to use a makeup brush uh, and then I'm going to start going around and kind of doing a little bit of dry brushing and like just using different kind of colors and stuff and then putting in some like just uh, I just want to break up the um, the dark gray you know so I kind of want to just like go around and do like a quick uh, dust of this stuff and then this stuff is like a dust like you do have to eventually seal it down with something like uh, you could use hairspray or I, I use um, uh, varnish um, so like I, I do kind of like to work from light to dark like I'll put down some or sorry, dark to light, like I'll put down some kind of darker looking colors first and then uh, and then it's going to look kind of stark at first, like you're it's going to really these colors are going to be really bright and uh, look very kind of in your face <laughs> for the moment but uh, as I go on the the colors are going to get kind of dulled down um so, but I'm, I'm putting on like the lightest gray kind of on top of everything else. Um, if that makes sense, like working darkest to, uh, to lightest and then putting on my, my grays very last. Um, but at this scale, it just kind of looks like dirt and then it looks like, here we gotta cover up a little broken spot there. Um, the skill just kind of looks like dirt, or it looks like um, tones in the rock, like natural kind of earthy tones. Um, I just kind of want to break those up, and and then that's this is what it's going to look like after the pigments are all sealed down. Like it's not going to be quite so stark. And then I'm going to dry brush with paint over this, and then that's going to give that uh, put some highlights in and give it a nice finish. So I kind of want to leave like some of these areas pretty dark, like in the shadow spots. Uh, and then, you know, kind of pick out some areas that I want to be my highlights. Okay, so now I want to come in with these um, I, I like these. They're like craft paints. They're like less than a dollar or two. They typically run like 85 cents a tube or something like that at like Michael's and Hobby Lobby, places like that, full cart. Um, so I'm gonna use iced coffee and Italian sage. Uh, and I actually really like both of these colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in some highlights and um, if, uh, if some some colors get you know mixed together like I'm I am kind of sort of make a palette a little bit um, but these are just gonna be my like highlight colors and then I've got a big chunky makeup brush and like it would be fine to this one you know it still has some of the pigments in there but it's not really that's not really gonna change the color of the paint that much um, but I'm just gonna kind of mix these together in the brush a little bit and then do like a dry brush kind of over brush thing uh, on top and then you can see that the the colors from the um, pigments are going to sort of mix in there too but this is going to bring out those uh, highlights and then uh, but yeah I am going to kind of focus on like the tops of these guys and um, just Kind of overbrush and then bring out the the highlights and stuff and then 
And then when I get to the sides, I'm gonna kind of work downwards. Uh, but um, on the on the top, you wanna kind of work in circles and then work off more of the paint from your brush. As, and then as you go down, you know, put less and less highlights on, like as you get towards the bottom. And then when I seal it down, when I do some varnish on this, the pigments are gonna get dulled down a lot. So they're, they're actually gonna kind of settle in the cracks a little bit more. And then the, the um, highlights are gonna kind of pop out a little bit more as I, as I go on. It's gonna look lighter gray on the top and then get a lot darker on the bottom. So yeah, that's um, that's kind of like where I wanna leave it. Um, like uh, you can keep going, like you can put flock on them and stuff. Like I did these ones to sort of look like snow and uh, slate stuff. Cause I wanted these for like frost grave and for uh, my, uh, my night haunts but I really just want modular hills like this <laughs> uh, without the, the whole surrounding tile part. Because these I feel like are just way, way more functional. And in fact, I don't want to put like grass or snow or anything on this because um, I just want to leave it like generic rocks that I can use in anything. And uh, whether it's supposed to be like a cold environment, a warm environment, whatever, alien planet, um, just uh, use it for whatever. But you can see that this it's very functional like these. You can pose uh, minis on this stuff very easily. Everything is kind of flat-ish. But, and it's also, these are an inch high, these are an inch high. So it's easy to count out movement. Um, and it, you know, you can see like areas where it looks like it would be easier to climb up and stuff. But the, that's that's what I like about it. It's very natural looking, but it's very functional at the same time. So anyways, yeah, I think that's going to be it, you guys. I'm going to go ahead and seal this down with some varnish, and then I'll post some pictures, like some close-ups, so, so you can see it a little better, like good high detail pictures, so you can see like how it looks close up. All right, so thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.